Welcome to the gap. This is the gap. Yeah. They should have never gave you platform. This is the gap. Welcome, guys. Uh, my name is Kamal. Today, I have a motherfucking guest. You're. You're. Say it again. You're. Hey. So watch you all you did. Introduce yeah, yourself. Good Godfather, man. Heartbreak hit, man. That's what I like to go by. Um, okay. Yeah. Ha heartbreak. Sometimes I just want to call you Hitman because yeah. I'll be like, this thing ain't broke my heart. Like, I ain't trying to <laughs> that's, that's like uh, respectable, but like my, my homie who passed last year, man. Rest in peace. Oh, that's shit. Really R.P. Hitman. Yeah. Um, Devin, Devin Brazil. That was that was my dog. But um, yeah, he was a uh, Hitman. Okay. More so like. I was heartbreak hit man just off the word play of the name, and then once he passed, I'm like, man, yeah, you got to stick now. Okay. Yeah, I'll never change the name because he's gonna live forever through us. Damn, I didn't know that. That's a that's a gem right there. Yeah. Okay. Hell took, yeah. I took a major hell right before all that weird COVID shit started happening. Damn, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah. So man, speaking, out, man, we doing all this shit for him at this point. That's what's up, bro. Yeah. Got to do it for the uh, dead homies and shit, bro. Yeah. Dead ass. Of course. We just huh? always do it for home, man, in general. So uh, where you from though? I'm from Fort Mill, South Carolina, man, by way of Paradise. You feel me? It's like a small community where I'm from, in which I did find out recently that um, this is my, like my great, great, great granddad actually started. Like, he founded the whole community where I'm from. So I've always had like this real draw to it. Yeah. But I never really knew why until they said that. And then, it, you know, it kind of all hit me. Okay. Like, Paradise is everything. Okay. Shit. Hey. So, uh, what brought you out here to San Diego, though? Um,. Like initially, uh, my cousin, he was out here in the military. And so for my graduation present from high school, man, he was like, I'm going to fly me out here. We can go see uh, Kevin Hart. Because Kevin Hart was performing like Fresno this 2012. Okay. So uh, I came out here, man, and I just fell in love with fell in love with being out here. And I started coming every summer after that. And then eventually me and my brother had moved out here like six years ago. Damn. Yeah. Did you did you start like surfing and shit? Start being like nah, a beach boy? Me, personally, totally, I, dude. So, you know, like, I don't, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but, you know, like, being, like, this in black culture in general, I feel like they're not, your parents not letting you fuck with that ocean like that, you feel me? So, back <laughs> home, you can go stand by the water and shit, but you're not really going in. So, like, by the time I got old enough to really be in the water, I didn't care for it. So, like, I appreciate the beach, though. I love the beach. But, um, like, being in the water, not necessarily, I don't really care for it. Because y'all water, I hear cold as fuck. Yeah, man, yeah. niggas don't be knowing how to swim and shit. Fuck all that. Yeah, I know how to swim, though. Like, that's what's crazy. Cause, you know, that's a stereotype. Like, it is. Like, I don't know how to swim shit. Yeah, but, I, like, so, being in Fort Mill, right? So, Paradise where I'm from is, like, the only thing you would really consider, like, the hood in that area. Yeah. So, it's like, we, it's, the town is predominantly white, but South Carolina is predominantly black. Okay. So, but, so, the area we in, they took us to learn how to swim, like, second grade. The school did. Like, they take you to the wreck and then teach you how to swim. So, and then the Boys and Girls Club, too, is the same way. So yeah, we definitely all came up swimming, but like surfing ain't never been my thing. You ain't, you ain't about that surf life? No, nah, my girl is though. She was all the matters. But Ooh. I'm not a beach baby. Like the beach is like four hours away from us back home. So you okay. only go to the beach like once a year. So that's what I'm saying. Like the, the want for doing all that has never really been there just because it's never been like the consistent thing. Okay. Therefore, you're not meeting like surfers who can go teach you how to surf type. You feel me? I got so, you. Like people who, who love the ocean, gonna take you out in the ocean. Hell no. Nah. Take you out in the ocean, fucking yeah. drown and shit. Like, ah, damn. So you didn't take one story like that and be like, no, nah, I'm cool. Yeah, for real. I'll watch y'all from here. <laughs> watch me. from a f***ing distance. Word. Fuck all that. Oh, shit. All right. Oh, before um, we get into the topics, um, I wanted to say RP to a couple people also. Sure. sure. Uh, Hank Aaron, a fucking legend. You know Hank, Hank Aaron, right? The, the baseball player. Yeah. He the one that's like one of the first African-American baseball players and he has to deal with a lot of bullshit and racism blatant in his face and <laughs> yeah. we're still putting up numbers. For the people, man. You gotta do that. Yep. And then um Larry King. Yeah, I just seen that too. So R. I Peter bruh. Yeah. They I mean, did over like fifty thousand interviews, but yeah. yeah. That's a lot. Fucking legend. I was thinking about this shit like, bruh, if I was doing all that damn talking to people, bro, and I came home, I, I wouldn't want nobody talking to me. Man, for real, bro. You gotta try to unwind. That's a lot of fucking interviews. Man. But the the variety and the range of like people he interviewed though, bro, like that shit was special. That shit was epic. Word. Damn. Yeah, man. I just wanted to say that. Ah, oh, man. But anyway, let's get into the first topic, bro. Let's get into it. <laughs> let's get into it. Shout out to the Truckers Mind Podcast. 
They were talking about this topic like two weeks ago. Uh, the boys is good though. Trucker Minds podcast. They from Bakersfield though. They from fucking where cows get tipped over and shit. What's crazy about that is, bro, <laughs> when I came out here and we went to Fresno, we had went past Bakersfield and I like I seen all the cows and shit like just going through that whole like area. It was it was wild to me, bro. I ain't never seen no shit like that. And I'm from the country, you feel me? But it was I seen <laughs> a lot of fucking cows. Wait a minute. You I'm saying moving. Bakersfield more country than the country itself? No, no, no. I'm not saying it's more country, but I'm like me being from the country, I would assume I wouldn't have seen shit like that. But like farms like that big, nah, we don't. I'm not gonna say we not don't have it, but in the area I'm from, you see like people that have like their own property. They may have like you know a few animals, but it's nothing like that, bro. Damn, it's nothing like that. You can tell that place is definitely for that. You feel me? So, shit. Yeah, I respect yeah. you though. Look, uh, shout out to them, bros. It's yeah. Eddie McGinn, K. Bangs. Uh, big but, shock out here. Hell yeah. Um. People that say sorry too much and don't really mean it. <sighs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to give them this real quick. Got to give them. What <laughs> 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 should you be talking about, huh? Man, um, how do you feel about that, bro? It's it's difficult, bro, because like me personally, um, not like, not like being one of the asshole types, but like people saying sorry is it's always kind of hit or miss. Because don't get okay. me wrong, a lot of times you just want somebody to acknowledge that they were wrong. So it's not about the you. sorry; it's the acknowledgement more so than anything. Like you know, you did that right. Because yeah. some people just act like they didn't do anything to you. You feel me, bro? Don't and, be the fucking worst <laughs> yeah, people. So like it's, nigga. it's always difficult, but you don't want you don't want somebody to feel like they got to tell you sorry a thousand times. But yeah, the way I feel about people in any action, man, like that, it's it's difficult without really knowing them and why they do the things that they do. You feel me? Because it may piss you off way before you get the answer as to why they actually do all this fucking apologize. No, I feel you. Yeah. Some people may have made people feel like shit in their whole lifetime to the point where they feel like a thousand apologies is what it takes to, you know, get back on your good side. And really, in reality, you probably wouldn't even tripping anyway. Yeah. It do be like that. Yeah. Because people don't, people don't like wronging good people though. Mm-hmm. They don't. But you don't know you wrong somebody good and so it happens because a lot of times people be so in their own world, they're not trying to abide by somebody else's movement. So it's like, a lot of things you can't know is wrong until you actually do the thing. Nah, I feel you. Mm-hmm. Damn. Hold on, I still gotta give it this to uh, These <laughs> motherfuckers, bro. I, bro, I can't stand that. Don't be saying you sorry, you don't really mean it. Or like, people that do say sorry too much, I'm like, bro, stop fucking saying you're sorry. Well, man, listen, bro, it could depend on how you made them feel at the time when they wronged you, you feel me? Because it's like right now, right, let's say you said the wrong thing to somebody and they slapped the Whoa. Right. This this, this is just Whoa. this is just technically there, you feel me? But at the same time, it's like, damn, I said something that, that made you feel so upset, you just slapped me, bro. Like that's and that's a surprise for everybody, isn't mm-hmm. it? You feel me? It's, it's, you just don't know, man, to things happen and it's it's hard to it's hard to have like your ways and try to mingle with other people because well, I feel like a lot of people go wrong in the world is they get upset with people because they don't do or respond to things the way that that person personally would. Yeah, so you that's every, true. Everybody moves in that selfish way. It's, but it's only because this is the only way of living, in a sense. Because you're raised around so many selfish people. Yeah. People don't know they're really selfish because, you know, everybody think they out here, you know, being the best them. That's true. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong about it. It's just the natural way of being around people. But mm-hmm. Everybody care about their own self first a lot of times. It's that uh, self, self-preservation and shit. Yeah. I don't know. My thing is like, I don't don't say sorry if you don't mean it. Like it's it's pointless. But how do you know? It's a, it's a waste of breath. Word. But how do you know somebody mean it or not? Like what 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 gives you the feel of damn? That was real. Like that was genuine. I can tell you really apologize. I think you could tell, and you could tell by actions too. Because sometimes people make the yeah, same bro. fucking mistake over and over again, and you saying sorry for it, and it's like, bro, you're making the same mistake. <laughs> Now it's like, come on. Hey. You're just saying sorry just to keep good faith. This is my thing. Like, I feel like the first time you wrong somebody, right? Like I said, you don't know it was wrong. So therefore, yeah. once it's acknowledged that this is wrong, now it's disrespect. Now yeah. you can, you know, react accordingly because everybody knows what's going on here. Exactly. But me, I'm, I don't know. I'm one of the type of people where I feel like I like being so removed and keeping my, you know, my energy clean and shit. If you wrong me the first time. You might not never hear from me again, and I don't feel the need to explain because it's just something that I feel like some things aren't more so like the personal feel like I would never do that to you. It's just like you shouldn't do that to nobody. Yeah, <laughs> you feel me? Like nobody would see that as being okay. 
And it's like those situations are things that will really make me kind of be like, all right, I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's not really worth giving the energy back. It's just like, all right, I, I move accordingly. I just keep on speed. Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> you keep out on speed. Yeah, okay, yeah. bars. Hold on, bro. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I'm dropping the bars out here. You gotta put people in mental time out sometimes, bro. Like, make them think about what they did wrong, because it shouldn't be up to you every time to let somebody know they're doing shit wrong. It's just, I feel like it's just certain ways you should you should go about, you know, um, treating others. Yeah. It's simple. Like, would you have liked if I did it to you? A lot of times, people probably would say no. Yeah, they gotta process the shit. Already. Yeah. A lot of people will react first, don't think. That's what we have the disconnect in our in our society. Yeah. So 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 basically you you don't mind people that really say sorry and don't mean it, or it's kinda of more like we don't know the first time, but after that it's like you shouldn't be doing all the same as sorry. Like, I mean, me personally, I don't find myself in a lot of situations where somebody's apologizing to me, just to be honest, because for one, that's how out of people's way I am. I'm not in your way for you to wrong me, you feel me? So therefore, I'm making sure you can't do nothing wrong because um, coming out here, like I learned I learned a valuable lesson that people aren't raised how I am. Like I'm from a small community, but it's like a, a very small, like family heavy community, you feel me? I'm out here in an implant place to where a lot of people don't know everybody. It's just a lot of strangers around it. So it's like yeah. everybody's in a different kind of survival mentality as opposed to you really just want to be good with everybody. Okay. I'm from a place to where, nigga, I can go up the street and get a plate from anybody's house and go all the way down the street and get a plate from anybody's house. Yeah. That's different, bro. Like, and it's a word I'm coming from, so I'm thinking it's like they're everywhere, and it's not really that. Yeah. So, like, as far as, like, people crossing me, I don't really ever feel that. And if you do cross me, I'm not going to even let you know you did it to the point where you feel like you should apologize, oh. unless it's that serious. Yeah, but what if it's, like, such a small infraction and people keep saying, like, sorry? It's, what I'm saying is more, like, not big things, yeah. but it's more of, like... So like you hanging out with my and like they keep saying sorry because they're talking too much during the show or like oh, yeah, yeah, they're not yeah. so, and then sorry every uh, minute it's like bro stop, stop like saying that. it because you yeah. don't really mean it stop that chill. Uh, so, I mean I I do my best to give people the peace of mind in those situations. So it's like let's say for instance somebody is talking a lot during the movie. It's either going two ways. So you think I'll stop talking? Or I'm just not come watch the movie with you. Like you feel me? Because I would rather not have the problem with you because. Of something you can't control. And I'm not here to control you, so it's like, damn. Damn, you don't hit him with the, shut the fuck up! Nah, bro, because it, <laughs> like, it has to be, like me personally, in, in the way I talk to everybody, bro, it has to be peace of mind first before anything. Yeah. So I, I will look for how I can keep my peace, and then, you know, if you want some help finding yours, I can tell you, you okay. know, or try to. But at the same time, if you're not going to be able to control yourself, and you got feel like you should keep apologizing, I would remove myself. You don't have to do all that. Don't change. Yeah. Be you, but be you over there. <laughs> <laughs> be you alone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, I just feel look it. Just just <laughs> y'all out there. If y'all do that, stop the shit. Don't don't do it. Don't be oh, saying you don't mean it. Yeah, just stop it. Yeah, just, 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 that's how people like being in your good graces though, bro. Like No, get, get on my bad graces. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> stop the bullshit. <laughs> Word. But um, let's get into this uh next topic. This one that you slid to me. Yes, sir. Keeping your passions alive and not letting people push you away from your passions. So expound on that. We'll, we'll, um. We'll, okay. So like me, right? Yeah. Um, like growing up back home, I spent a lot of time in a barbershop in which we had like you know the one, the, the one neighborhood barbershops. You know everybody kind the of the barber through. legend. Exactly. That nigga got all the wisdom. Exactly. He's been cutting hair for over forty years. So Damn. You, you, this some this somebody that's seeing everybody grow up. So but okay. it's like hearing the conversations and everything, um, you hear how it is and like growing up in like a, a very southern uh place like that is traditional. You feel me? Like yeah. meaning everybody kinda see has a blueprint to how they think you should leave your life uh-huh. or lead your life. So it's like you go to school, you graduate, you know, you graduate go to college, you graduate college, you start your family, you get your career and that's it. Yeah. And that's how a lot of people really seen how things work. And so when you have shit like that and you're trying to grow up and be passionate about something and then you're talking to a whole bunch of people that haven't chased like dreams, uh-huh. it's very difficult. And you can see a lot of people like have been, um, they've been shunned by families, all kinds of shit, but just by trying to be themselves. You yeah. feel me? So it's like people naturally put off their fears onto you whenever you're doing something that they can't control or they don't know about. Because everybody, don't get me wrong, genuinely wants to help, but they only can help you how they know to help. 
So if you ain't been out here trying to chase some shit from ground up, don't talk to me, bro, because you can't do shit for me. So that's what I mean by keeping your passions alive, because naturally it's everybody around you who don't know what's going on will probably rather tell you to do something else just because they don't understand or they can't tell help you, you know, in your field. Do you think it's like a form of like programming though? Yeah, of course. Like it's, it's, it's but that's programming. what I mean. But programming is the same as tradition in a sense. Like, yeah. yeah, this has been passed down for generations. Like this is what you're supposed to do. If you don't do this, you're pretty much saying fuck your family. Like that's how a lot of people see it or make you feel like you're doing like just disrespecting and shit. Yeah. And that's not really the case, bro. It's just, I don't know. I feel like we grew up in the generation of where everything like really split. So we've seen the last of traditions versus yeah. the newest of what's going to be going on, you know? So we have, I feel like, the best perspective on everything that's kind of moving forward. Like, but that's why there's so many, like, young-ass entrepreneurs now who really, you know, get into it just because they're growing up to be the fuck you generation. Like, as in, yeah. if you're not supporting me, fuck you. Yeah. And that's how I feel like everybody should honestly be in a sense because you have to, you have to want your passion that much, though. It has to be a fuck everybody who don't want to help just because, you know. Yeah. It's just holding you back, bro. You got to keep that shit alive. And once your dreams die, I feel like your life is over. Like, honestly, like, what do you... If Damn. you don't have anything to be passionate about... It's that was kinda, dark. No, it's not, <laughs> not like... <laughs> not, yeah, not, but not even in the sense Damn, of being like... You dying, nigga. You lose your passion. Nah, but when you... When you when you wake up and you're not like in a in a mood to go up, you know, do something, right? No, I feel like you. how are you supposed to feel? Your life is just working on the continuous cycle. Like every day, everything's the same. You feel is me? that a like, form of depression? Um, because I feel like that. Kind I of think that's like I think that's a form of like depression. Maybe reaching like reality in the sense of okay. you don't really know you're depressed, but at the same time, you just know you are not happy with how your life is moving. Because like me. I feel like I'm, I feel my life is getting content. Like I do things, certain things to break out of it because I'm very aware of myself and I'm always so, you know, reevaluating myself. It's like being in a rat race. Exactly. So how do you get out though? Something has to inspire you to do something different. You got to break out that yeah, motherfucker. But, but that's what that's I mean. That's the passion. So, so it's like, it's like when you, when you see, um, let's say you go talk to somebody right now, bro, they can be 50, 60 years old and you just having a cool ass conversation. Yeah. They might be like, hey, listen, man, whatever you do, don't stop dreaming. Yeah. Like, but they're telling you from experience, this can be somebody that's not doing shit with their life, but they know, like, damn, I wasted all those years listening to everybody else, doing all this extra shit. Because a lot of people, I think, you talk to learn trades. Like, that's like how you're supposed to go into adulthood. Like, learn something that you can do and make a dollar off of, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But then you see yourself 20 years down the road and you've never, you never top rankings, you know, in this field. It don't feel right when everybody else around you is gaining success so easy. Yeah. Because opportunity has always been out there, bro. That's why people move to California. They're mm -hmm. the best opportunities in the world. Or at least what yeah, you think it, may be that. You but niggas me? is moving out now. Yeah. Damn, niggas is leaving California like a mug right now. I used to see a lot of people saying on. they wanted to move. Like, But even like when I first came out here, there used to be a lot of people from San Diego being like, damn, I can't wait to like leave. I'm like, bro, y'all tripping. This is a gym. Like yeah. everywhere else is meant for you to vacation to, go peep it. Yeah. But as far as like full scale of being able to have dope ass living, you feel me? You got weather all all the time. It's great besides now, of course. But you feel me? Other than that, you got a they, whole they year of like spring that. break. I don't know that shit. It's, it's always sunny in San Diego. <laughs> marketing. <laughs> you feel me? That's marketing. <laughs> That's good marketing. But um, no, I just mean like, bro, like for real, it's just you never, you never kind of know, man. Like you just never know what the outside world may be like. So granted, somebody from San Diego may move back or could visit South Carolina and fall in love with that shit. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Some people like the slow down, like just the vibe of really being in tune. Cause like I be seeing like old people outside working in their yards, like, damn, you just proud to have your own house, huh? It's gotta be. It's gotta get you up. And that's what I mean, passion, things you're passionate about. Follow. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what make you wake up. That's why you're doing that back around full circle. <laughs> For the passion. For the you feel me? What's your passion plan of yours? What's up? What's some passions of yours that, that make you get up every day and can't wait to work type shit? I'm joking. Guys. He's not. It's probably not. <laughs> He's probably not. <laughs> that's, that's how the world works. Nah, <laughs> this is my passion. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it right now. Filming, shows, yeah. writing, all that. So YouTube, if, all that. That's, so that's my passion. So somebody was to come in here and tell you right now, like, Hey, listen, come on, man. That shit ain't gonna work for you, bro. You should stop. Like, how do you how do you respond to it, or how do you think you would respond to somebody telling you to stop? It's already happened, and you know I tell them, go eat a nigga. Out my face. If you're not saying fuck you to everybody who's telling you not to do your passions, 
Well, you, you don't go. Doing something wrong. Come on, because you didn't want it bad enough if somebody can make you stop. Yeah. You didn't want it bad enough. That's what the universe going to tell you. The universe got you, people. Mm-hmm. At all times, the universe got you. Yep. And so, that being said, when it comes to your passion, and somebody want to be a freaking hater. Let them hate. Let them hate. Let that but shit you, fuel you. You could tell them to go eat a dick. Fuck you. <laughs> you could also say that. That's okay. That's okay. I give you the approval. <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. But you gotta get your point across, however, you know, however you seems fit. And yeah, because some people won't just take the like, no, nah, I'm still doing this anyway. You gotta really force some people to understand. Yeah. Unfortunately. For real. I'm here for all that though. Okay, man. Hold on. Let me get a for the, the passion. Gotta have the passion. Gotta have that shit, Ooh. Gotta have that shit. All right. But uh let's get into the next segment. The sad <laughs> segment. <laughs> Ooh, you like yeah, that? You like that? That's cool. I was wondering what that shit meant, too. Yeah, it means shows, albums, and films. Hey. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, though. Let's uh, let's talk about your uh, it's mixtape. Mm-hmm. It's let's mixtape. talk about your mixtape, why you constructed it, what's it about. Let us know. Let the world know. Um, so, this is Heartbreaks Hit List, Volume 1. It's going to be like the start of like a series of mixtapes I'll be doing. Because I used to do one called Time On My Hands, like when I first lost <laughs> all my music. Damn. Like, yeah, my shit just crashed, so I had... I found myself a lot of time on my hands. I just did a mixtape, you feel me? <laughs> Shit. Yeah. And Basically. then um but like this one is just more so because I wanna start I wanna start being more engaged as far as like really dropping content. But this is content that's more relatable, you know, people know from me because I'm still I'm still building out who I am as an artist, meaning I'm still, you know, finding my target market and stuff like that. I got so you. I go find the beats that I really like and I just, you know, I do something to them and I put it together. But this one is like um it's very well put together. It's probably gonna be one of my favorite projects. And then like my style of doing them is I like to I like to kind of clash like beats that I like. So it's like they sound alike, then I'll probably go from one song or one beat to the next and mash that up and make it one song because that should just be fun to me. Okay. So that's what you hear like pop star at the mud. So even with my um my titles, um, I make sure I blend it. So the pop star at the mud is the um obviously the pop star one that uh, Drake and DJ Khaled did, and yeah. the out the mud came from uh, the back in blood like the Pooh Shiesty song. Okay. And then show out the Whoopty is the uh, the Whoopty. What yeah, the hell? Whoopty by C.J. Um, his that name C.J. is Whoopty. Yeah. I mean that's that was the name of the song, but I think that's like they they uh, click and I, I believe he's from New York or somewhere in that area. Okay. East Coast. And then the show out was uh, from Kid Cudi's album with Pop Smoke. So oh, that's it was like, like the yeah, New York, so it's like the New York town. You feel me? So I, I blended those styles together. Okay. And that's how I kind of got to that. But um. Yeah, man, this is gonna be the start of something dope, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna get over into the doing the Billboard Top 100 mixtapes too, to where I take the top ten songs from the Billboard Top 100, no matter what song it is, and I'm going yeah, no matter what, no matter what song it is. This on that Miley Cyrus. By the way, Miley Cyrus album was smack. Work. I ain't yeah. never heard a project of hers. Yeah, that shit but, was um, smacking. The last one. You know who Harry Styles is. Yes. Yeah. So you know he got a song called Watermelon that was like number one in the charts. I did a song to that shit, bro. It's on my phone right now. Nobody really done heard it. But when I got the first initial idea for the Billboard one, okay. yeah, I did that shit. And I, boy, I was, yeah, Fuego on that. Like, Ooh, I sauced it up. Okay. Yeah, I sauced it up. Hell yeah. The word. <laughs> because for me, man, uh, making music is like my ultimate form of creativity, meaning I love to be challenging that shit. So I love to challenge myself. So the challenge is literally just taking any beat that most people probably wouldn't get on and find a way to get on there and still be myself. But still, you know, the presence of it can still be felt in the genre of wherever it came from. Okay. Whether it's, you know, pop, country, rock. I've been to all that shit. Cause Gospel? Like, yeah. I, I honestly... Bluegrass. Like, for me, personally, <laughs> if I ever got to gospel, it would probably be to do with, like, a project that my grandma can enjoy. Okay. I got you. Yeah, because a lot of my style of music comes from being in the kitchen with her, like, initially. Like, she is... um, She's definitely, like, my vibe. Okay. To, to like the soulfulness I got and all that, but my turn energy come from my mom. Like, oh, she, for real? Hell yeah, bro. She was like Master P heavy, No Limit Soldier. Master DMA, P! Hey, yeah, make him say, huh? DMA some the Rough Riders. Bro. Oh, like, shit. No, like, real, like the real energy of like me, because I'm always a cool vibe and get me wrong. Yeah. Even listen to like my brother's music, you would hear them like both being like extra turn, but we yeah. all got the same element of foundation is just we all you know kind of exercise it differently okay but yeah whenever you hear something turn to me that's definitely from my mom okay but yeah damn she got great musical taste yo for sure damn for sure. she got the vibes too though she got the vibes too man but yeah, we come from a dope ass foundation of like at least knowing music okay. I, I didn't have like a lot of family members that knew like instruments and shit which i wish i did 
Um, because now I'm in a very heavy phase of doing that. Yeah. But like my uncle, my uncle Anthony, man, he definitely was in tune with the instruments. He had guitar, the little DJ um turntables. So now, now I'm exercising my right to practice. You feel me? I'm old enough to learn these shits on my own. So uh, got me a harmonica. I got harmonica. A, exactly. Hey, That's the good Godfather. <laughs> That's a good guy, probably. They'll see it. That's a good yeah, guy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hey. So a harmonica, a piano, and an um, electric guitar. And then once I learn these three, I'm going to saxophone. Okay. Yeah. Damn, nigga, you about to be a one man <laughs> band. I told you, bro. Like for real, for real. Cause man, Prince, he he was like that. He was. He was like that. Like, he mastered a lot of instruments, and that shit is very inspiring. Hell you feel yeah. Me? I ain't know why the fuck you like Prince so much when I was younger. I had to grow up and learn those. Well, he was a little freaky too. You hear his music. I mean, but you know, like, <laughs> what, what what was weird though, like, because for me, obviously being young and not knowing better, bro, you could probably look at Prince and think anything. So initially, I was just like, nah, I don't, I don't even know like what y'all got going on, even fucking with him. Yeah. And then like my uncle was like the the people who I look up to most. They was like, nah, Prince is the man. So it was like it just made me look at it differently because. It took somebody like that to tell me like Prince was a shit instead of you know because obviously I'm sure he had like a very big like um female fan base that was real driven but everybody respected him for being a dope artist and I didn't know because and he's a hoop yeah word I mean obviously I seen the Dave Chappelle episode to even know like yeah. that that shit was like you know he was in tune on that level but just I'm talking about I was way younger like not okay. no, not really ready to respect music from those aspects I got you yeah so I'm on point now though for real for real hell yeah yeah Come on, let's get Hey. <laughs> For Prince Big and box. the mixtape, y'all go check that out. It's on SoundCloud. Yes, give, give me your uh, under heartbreak hit man. Yeah, man. I'm heartbreak hit man under everything. My SoundCloud, my Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. I just I just redid. So on Twitter, I'm under the uh, Good Godfather, Ooh. and the God is spelled G A W D. Yeah. G A W D. Yeah. I get the good guy from um, James Brown, man. Very, very big fan of James Brown. So when you hear that ad lib, that's where it came from. James Brown was the shit. He definitely was the shit. Damn. He was the man. For yeah. real, for real. Hell yeah. I got a couple songs I did to his beats too. I'm telling you, bro, I be all over the place with songs. Like, it's just songs that people have not heard. It's just, I be working on my craft to myself. I feel like for me, making music is like a, a very vulnerable thing to me. Like, for me to just be able to sit with myself and really exposed to energy and the creativity so i like to i like to lock in like after like one two in the morning and when the whole world is asleep and yeah. just work by myself so i've came across a lot of different vibes but just working on shit okay really i've been getting to my um element of doing my own production okay but like me and clutch we drop a project every year so who's clutch they don't know who clutch? yeah oh that's clutch yeah clutch is the producer for the losers man that's that's big bro right there um he done both my two projects I have out, the Man of Steel Street and Return of Hoochie Mama. He okay. produced both those. Very fun. And the thing about me and Clutch is we be doing these projects in a week. Like literally just out of nowhere, Clutch, bro, let's do a project. And we do everything like right then and there. And it just, it just happened fast as fuck. That's just our work flow together. I love that shit. So if anything, I may drop one project this year with him. And I'm trying to get, I got a producer back home man, Hundo Holyfield. I definitely want to get him out. So I may do like a EP with him, like four songs. Okay. And then my pops be producing too, so Damn. I want to do like a four song EP with my pops. That's gonna be called um, "Sins of the Father, Bless Thy Son, Bless the Son." Sins of the Father, Bless Thy Son. Okay, yeah. I like that title. Yeah, because okay, I mean, fire. yeah, he got locked up for doing what he did. You feel me? Make sure he was taking care of his family. So I would never, I would never put that against him. Yeah, you feel me? It's all love there. I can respect that, especially like as a man now, I'm doing my best to make sure the family is, you know, good. I can understand why you'd be driven to want to. Do whatever you can to take care of them. So yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Damn, hold on, bro. Most definitely gotta. Like, that is. That's what's up, man. For real. Good father, bless that son. Damn. I know. That's a tight ass title. I appreciate I can't, it. I can't wait to. I can't wait <laughs> I to hear that. It. Yeah. Can't wait to hear the music from that. Woo! But uh. Are you ready for this? Let's get into it. Are you ready for this? Let's get into it. Ooh! It is me, me time. <laughs> yeah, I knew you was gonna like that. Yes, sir. Uh. All right, you already know what it is. It's the meme segment where we go over memes. <laughs> <That's a> special <laughs> memes today. So, since so we're talking about passions, you you knew 
uh, some people out there know that I used to do photography. Facts. That was one you of was far as fuck with photography too. I know everybody you tells you me that. With that. Oh. Where? Because when I first met you, I didn't even know you did photography though. So I thought you were doing like all your visual and film stuff. Yeah. So when I seen like some of your content, I was like, damn. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. That shit lit. Ooh. I love photography too, by the way. Heartbreak Hot Shot on Instagram. If you want to go check that out. Hey, shameless plug. You did. Hey. Um, but yeah, I used to do photography. You do photography. So this is going to relate. Wow. Oh, you're going to feel this. And all my photography people out there, you're going to feel this meme. <laughs> all right, so we got the the young the young white lady with the camera. <laughs> is that a, a, a Nikon? I already Might be a, a, I feel the disrespect from just reading this shit. Like, <laughs> you feel me? And she she's taking the picture and is like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna let you have the pleasure of reading what what it says. Taking photos for a client when he asks, so do you have a real job on the side? Mm. <laughs> I feel like this is a little bit more in tune too because they got a woman being a photographer and when he asks, you feel me? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of disconnect there, baby. It's a lot of disconnect there, and that's. Yeah, that's tough. You can read into that a lot of different ways. But um me personally, man, it's especially being like a photographer and like now. Yeah. Um, I love it for the passion of it. You feel me? I just like taking I like capturing dope moments. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like if you're in this position right here to where you probably just pay her for these photos or this photo shoot, mm-hmm. you shouldn't be asking about a real job on the side. As long as you're making money, you have a real job. For real. These motherfuckers stop asking that shit. See, people want you to be corporate. <laughs> is that your real job? You, corporate. If you're not, you don't work at at and If you're not putting in the same kind of time as somebody else, they feel like they can judge what you do. That's true. Damn, you saw how that all tied back in. The passions. Passion. And, damn. So whose passion will last long? You can get fired any given day working for somebody else. Yeah. As a photographer, who your boss? You is. Unless you work at yeah, a yeah, photography yeah, yeah. If you, shop. If you, you know, go that route anyway, don't get me wrong. But as long as you have your craft of your passion in photography, you can always make a dollar, though. That's true. Ooh. Hold on. Dude, we dropping gems. <laughs> Damn! We dropping gems in this game. <laughs> All right. So this one, bruh, this shit had me laughing. I think the words are not funny, but <laughs> you'll see. Bruh, I'm going to read this one. So it said it has a judge, and it says, Previously jailed three times, Hannah Johnson became one of the youngest judges in American history at 27. Good for the brother. But when I first saw this, I was like, nigga, is this you? Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I was like, hold on, bruh. That's like two places at once. Nah, where is I don't even do full photos like that. You know, I, I at least have a temp. I know. I know. I know. That's why I just no, thought just, it was funny. No I was like, to the man no, how he rock his, but just me personally, I gotta at least have my temp. That's your doppelganger. Yeah, everybody got a doppelganger too, huh? Damn. Hey, what kind of celebrity look like you had? Like, what people tell you look like? Uh, uh, who they say I look like? You know, the stupid shit like Steph Curry, Clay. <laughs> All white skin is. And everything light skin. If you light skin, you look like nigga. That's hilarious. I'm like, bro. Oh, no. I don't know that number. No, so I will not answer. Listen, everybody know, call back twice if it's important. Yep. But... Yeah, That's man. Like, who else is my uh, lookalikes? Uh, light sk- anybody light skin? I got <laughs> John Legend. Got John Legend one time. Oh yeah. shit, John Legend. Um, um. Oh man, I'm drawing a blank. His daughter fine as hell. Uh, Lenny Kravitz. You got Lenny Kravitz? Yes. I know. I got <laughs> some good lookalikes. You feel me? Some Lenny good Kravitz. ones. <laughs> it's just like it's it's just like a Lenny Kravitz just seemed like it's random though in a sense. Like that's not somebody everybody's probably looking to throw out like damn, this nigga look like Lenny Kravitz. It yeah. gotta be glasses though, bro. It gotta be the vibe, like Yeah, they know yeah. how it be, you know. Cause I'm always cool bro, so I got uh I get fabulous a lot. You do look my, like fab. My Holy main shit. one my main one I ever got in my life is Silver Shocker though. Like, but that one's been on point because like people really be they be really wanting to put their silver shock one out there. But I fuck with it because <laughs> my mama know what I told you. I told you. Hey, like, oh, I like that flip. Word. Okay. See, it all come back around, man. That's that's good flow. That's what's up. Yeah. I just wanted to say, okay, this why she said I look like what. This is not what she said, but this is why I didn't apply. <laughs> that I look like Lenny Kravitz. They say Lenny Kravitz top fifty sexiest man on the fucking planet. Oh, so you gonna take yours in stride? <laughs> Take your shit in stride. Uh, I respect it, brother. <laughs> Definitely respect it. You gotta be great. Hey, got you gotta to be great. But this is this is why I I chose this meme. The 
the phrase itself, I wanted to get that out there anyway. 27 as a judge, African American. Where you been locked up three times? Yeah. So that must have all been for bullshit. Because I can easily see him being like, bro, this, this is so much bullshit. I'll become a judge my damn self. Yep. And you want to know one thing? I know it's a slave owner name, but Johnson, all Johnsons are great. You know, my name Johnson. Yeah. So you feel me? <laughs> I had to put it out there. You feel Word, me? Nah. Claim that shit. Yeah. You feel me? Claim that. Hell yeah. But I just, I thought it was funny. Kind of, kind of looked like you and it was like. <laughs> <laughs> I would never be a judge. All right, so this be, oh man, I think we think about it all the time. I think about it sometimes. I don't know about you, but <laughs> hey, I thought it was funny. You got uh this nigga that looked like uh a nigga from The Walking Dead, one of the zombies. Thanks. Really like a well, zombie. I'm legend. Yeah, for real, he does. This is like character from I Am Legend or something. This probably is probably why he's thinking it too, cause nigga mad ugly. So. Since I get in the face when I ain't talking about people, bro. <laughs> I gotta get in the face. I'm, I'm keeping everything positive, clear energy, you dig? <laughs> Not even this, this motherfucker? That's what I'm saying. I hope this ain't a real person. It don't look oh, real. Oh, no, this ain't, this like cartoon. This yeah, is just drawn. This is drawn. This ain't nobody yeah, for real. Sure. Could be Jeff Bezos, though. <laughs> Touche. Touché. But in the brain, it has, I have got, I, oh, damn, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get. Sexier. Oh, I got it. I got it now. I have got to get sexier. Damn. Yeah, when you put that got to get, that's that's serious shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Mad that's serious. real serious shit. Damn. Bruh, sometimes that's how you be thinking. You gotta Dude, how can I get sexier? I mean look, it's natural for it's it. natural for everybody, man, to want to be better in some sense. I wake up and want to elevate. I yeah. feel like I wake up in my prime every day. No matter how I feel, I'm waking up to the best version of myself. Cause I learned something yesterday, most likely. You feel me? Ooh, uh, dropping that knowledge. All the yesterdays added up to the day, man. I got the most knowledge ever. And then tomorrow morning we'll do this again. Okay. But you gotta wake up in greatness, man. Like, yeah. For real. Because I feel like everybody kind of. I feel like a lot of times people have a good mood, man. This is some ruins it. It's like it's, if you can wake up on your own time and nobody bothers you, you probably gonna wake up in a good mood. Exactly. As soon as your alarm clock happens, the sun come out, you smell something, your phone ring. Those are the things that start your day off by pissing you off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. You gotta tell them shit's up. Damn. Word. Dropping in uh. gems. That's what we do. Ooh. We do popcorn playing shit. Hey, popcorn pimping. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> uh, we, had, we had ran into the dude, uh, <clears throat> the one that played that character on How High. Um, I Need Money. We oh, you ran into him? Yeah. yeah. Bro, we was in LA coming out. Uh, We had just had a dinner and shit. So we was just about to leave. And then, bro, had just, he had just pulled up. It must have been like him and security guard. They pulled up. He just was saying what's up to us just because we was coming out. We just outside vibing. Yeah. And we like, oh, shit. That's how I need money. You feel me? Like, this naturally, that's that's the way we... Because me and my brother, uh, Flash, and my little brother... Money, yeah, dog, dog, bro. We grew up on how high. Like, love that shit. Yeah. And what's funny about it is the first time we ever tried to watch it with my mom and when it first came out, we couldn't watch it. Because, you know, that first opening scene with the titty showing? Yeah. It was like, nope, y'all go to bed. <laughs> Cover your eyes. Exactly. Go to the bed. only titty showing the whole movie <laughs> fucked it up for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so when we had uh, talked to him and shit, we had took a picture of everybody doing the popcorn player shit. And ever since then, we're like, yeah, we've been crowning the new popcorn players. Ooh. You feel me? Yeah, no, we're going to strive with that. So every time something dope happens, just put a little butter on it. You feel me? Put a little butter on it. That's yeah. what happened. <laughs> yeah, what's popcorn without that fire butter on it? Hey. It yeah. ain't shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey. Anyway, uh, this is my guest, my right hand man. Yes, sir, my dog. But when a woman sits here, it's gonna be my right hand woman. So that's why I got you on the right side. <laughs> that makes you know? sense. Yeah. Marketing. Uh, you like that, huh? Yeah, for sure. I like all dope marketing moves, bro. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Hey. Bro, I want to get into doing like a consultant firm this year, bro. Like just. Creative consulting, helping people find creative ways to help push their success. Okay. I was about to say, I'm about, I was about to be like, yo, uh, before you cut me off. Damn, my bad. Man. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm it's fucking with you now. <laughs> nah, but what I was about to say, I was, I, was about, I was about to say, uh, reintroduce yourself and then tell them uh, like what projects or what you want to get out there to the world. Let the, let the let them audience know. Let them know. Well, I am Heartbreak Hitman, you know, a.k.a. the good godfather. A.k.a. Mr. Washi. Well, I got, I got names to go. Ooh. Um, <laughs> But... Yeah, so you can follow me on my Instagram. I feel like that's most important nowadays. Um, under Heartbreak Hitman, my Facebook Heartbreak Hitman. I'm just now getting back into the Twitter game under the Good Godfather. The God is spelled G A W D. Um, definitely go check out Return of the Hoochie Mama. That's like, yeah, it's 
you, you see the reaction. It's just the energy. You feel yeah. me? I feel like sure, I feel like that was a very fun project to do. Um, because I was just tapping into like all the fun elements, you know, that I like, and it was supposed to happen right before the last initial lockdown was supposed to be lifted okay. in May of 2020. I thought the world was gonna be open, clubs is lit. <laughs> it definitely uh, that way. Yeah, that. so we're gonna bring it back this year, yeah. you know, put some real marketing dollars behind it. The return of the Hoochie Mama is gonna be the one. Trust, it definitely is. But more music on the way though. I'm dropping singles all year. I definitely wanna make a move to do two to four a month. So I feel like I've been sitting on music for too many years, bro. You gotta get it to the people. You gotta get out there. That's how you lose it, not yeah. not putting it out. So that's that's where I'm at with it. Well, I appreciate you being on I the show. Thank you for having me, man. It you was dope. Me? It was dope. Drop right. some I gems and all that. Put some butter on them gems. <laughs> Put some butter on them. You feel Put me? Butter on <laughs> Bow! Anyway, this is The Gap. I'm Kamal. Like I'm heartbreaking. Hey. And like the tubers say, like, <laughs> share, comment, subscribe, and push that notification bell. And for my potters out there, if you listen to audio art, the audio form, if y'all don't want to see your face, you don't <laughs> listen to our voices. It's on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. On that <laughs> note, stop saying sorry, you <laughs> <laughs> We out of here. Peace. Good God. <laughs> this was good. This was good. Ooh, yeah.